it's time to go find more snakes. Oh, snake. They are built for going underground. Oh, corn snake. Look, 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 look. Oh my god, and it's a really pretty one too. Oh my god. Those are not just one, but two timber freaking rattlesnakes. You know, rain may not ruin herping, but good lord, could it stop raining for five seconds? Like for five seconds? Jeez. I'll be right there, but you'll have to grab Let's get on out of here. Well, as you probably have figured out, uh, road cruising last night didn't work <laughs> at all. Like I said the previous night, I think the rain's just, it's cooled it down so much that at night, snakes aren't really moving that much. It, it's basically mimicking spring. Today's my last day here. I got one more day, and there's still one more side I've got to look at, and one more snake, one more, that I have targeted and that snake is the Eastern Hognose Snake. I'm gonna go ahead and head out and find some snakes. It's the last day, let's make it memorable. All right, well, I made it to the next spot, so let's uh, start flipping some stuff. All right, well, I just found this big old thing. Could definitely have something under it, so let's try and flip it. Oh, it folds, I see. All right, nothing there. Here's something. Yeah, is something. Oh my goodness. Look at this. Got, oh, nice. We got a worm snake and a ringneck snake under the same piece. Look at that. Beautiful. Very nice. Two of the small fossorial species that live around here right next to each other. How about that? Now, once again, we've already found both of these species, so... I'm just gonna let them on their way. I'm not really gonna film them any more than this, but very cool, very, very cool. I always love me a good good double flip with two different species. Nice, okay. Here you go, guys. Here you go, all right. Back under, back under, back under. There you go. And then Mr. Worm Snake. There you go, buddy. Nice, well, starting it off pretty good. See, now this is ridiculous. I can clearly tell that somebody moved this, displaced it from where it was, and if you know half a thing about flipping tin, whether it's deliberately put there or not, do not move it, okay? I mean, there may still be something under here, I don't know. There's not, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do whoever put this out a favor and put it back to the way it was because clearly it was not like that before. I don't know who woulda, who woulda done that, but don't move tin. If you find it, don't move it. If it was put out there deliberately, it was put that way for a reason. So just don't move it. Same thing with that. You can see how that used to be covered by something and now it's not. I mean, I don't know why people have to go do this kind of stuff. It's ridiculous. So once again, I'm gonna go ahead and do them a favor and put it back the way it was because it wasn't like that before. Oh, look at that. There's a shed skin of something. Look at this. What are you? Um, it looks like a... Oh, wait a minute. Is that a baby racer? This might be a baby racer, actually. I think that's what that is. I'm not positive. It can be pretty difficult to identify some snakes by their shed skins, but I think that's a racer. A juvenile. Very cool. Hopefully I see this snake under one of these other pieces. Once again, I mean, this isn't even my tin site, but I'm I'm mad for, for whoever <laughs> put this out there, because I mean, you can clearly tell that somebody moved this away from where it was before. I mean, ah, it's so disrespectful. It's so disrespectful. I mean, I, I don't know. It's just so disrespectful. Do not move tin. It is there for a reason. Do not move it. 
Oh, whoa. Big copperhead. Holy crap. <laughs> I didn't even notice that at first. Look how big that freaking copperhead is. Jeez. That's a nice sized one. Wow. Now, obviously, the, the subspecies regarding copperheads, uh, you know, it's not technically a, a thing anymore, but... I'm pretty sure these are considered, well, what used to be considered northern copperheads because A, I mean, you can see the, the copper colored head in comparison to the rest of its body whoop, is very, very noticeable when on the southern copperheads, it's not, not as noticeable. Plus, it's got some spotting and stuff like that in between its uh, hourglasses. I'm going to go ahead and set it down. Wow, that's a really awesome looking snake, dude. Hmm. Yeah, you can see how it's starting to get too wet under that. That's that's uh, not what you want. And once again, somebody moved this. It's ridiculous, guys. What the heck? If you do stuff like this, take this as a wake-up call. Stop. Don't do it. It's so disrespectful. So around now, there was still plenty of cover left to turn up, so I kept flipping stuff. While there was still plenty of tin left to flip, uh, it was becoming pretty evident at this point that this tin site had fallen victim to one of the worst plagues that any tin site can experience. If you're wondering what that plague is, well, I've got two words for you. Irresponsible herbers. All right, well, I just got done at that site. You know, yeah, it was a good little three snake uh, triple. You know, nothing, nothing too crazy, nothing too rare, but I can't complain with the amount of luck I've been having this trip. What basically what happened was a lot of the tin, it, it had rained so freaking hard and so freaking much that the, you know, the ground beneath the tin was actually starting to get saturated because, you know, the, the water table has risen so much because of all this rain. So some of that ground was actually starting to get damp right underneath the tin and snakes typically don't like to sit on that you know wet surface it can uh, it can give them fungal infections and it's just too cold and you know they just don't like it that much so that and you know i think a lot of it had to do with the fact that somebody was out here moving it and you could clearly tell that it had been moved by someone so whoever that was especially if you're watching this video what the hell don't don't do that if you flip tin just put it back exactly where it was even if you think in your head that it would be better a certain way just put it back the way it was it's better for everyone uh you know i probably would have found more snakes just then if it hadn't have been disturbed that much because trust me the snakes they can tell when something's been moved i mean jesus my house was moved even a few feet <laughs> i would notice it trust me so it's kind of the same deal and they might not want to go under it again if it's been disturbed that much so just don't move it flip it See if anything's under it, there's nothing wrong with that, and then put it right back down where it was. And that's all there is to it. It's so simple, yet so many people for some reason cannot do it. So, I'm not done yet. <laughs> I really want to find that hog nose. So I'm actually going to go back to the first spot that I was at when this trip began. Because apparently it has a lot of hog nose there. And uh, I'm going to try and flip that one last time. And uh, see if maybe, uh, maybe I get lucky. And we'll see what happens. You know, sometimes the gnats are so bad, you have to do some pretty extreme things. Some pretty extreme things. Well, some rather unfortunate news. I just got to the flip site that I started off this trip with, the one that I was hoping to get a hog nose snake at, and I got out of the car and I heard gunshots, uh, very distinct gunshots in the very near area. So I'm gonna go ahead and pass on that. Uh, you know, I don't feel like uh, dying, but I'm in no position at all to complain about anything. I mean, this trip, I cannot believe the results that I got with this trip. I have found more rare snakes on this one trip than I have ever found in the course of a couple of days. I mean, good lord, you had two corn snakes, a freaking brood of baby prairie king snakes, uh, a giant hatchery of copperheads. Oh yeah, then there was also that milk snake, and last but certainly not least, two timber rattlesnakes underneath the same exact piece of tin. I'm gonna miss this place. I can't wait to come back. This has been a hell of a few days. I hope y'all enjoyed it. I hope y'all learned something cool from it, and I will We'll see y'all on the next one. Y'all have a great day. All right, see y'all later.
Hey everybody, so since I didn't find a hognose snake on this particular trip, that reminded me, I actually do have footage of a hognose snake that I found earlier in the year that I never released footage of. So since I didn't find one just now, I hope you all enjoy this footage of this uh, pretty incredible eastern hognose snake. Alright, enjoy. Oh, I see a snake. Oh my god, that's a hog nose. That's a hog nose. Oh my god. No way. No way. You're kidding me. You are kidding me. This is a hog nose snake. I. Oh my god. This spot is so damn good. Oh my god. I... Oh, watch, watch, watch. Look. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. He's playing dead. He's playing dead. Oh my god. Look at him go! <laughs> oh, and now he's dead. Now watch this. Watch this. I'm gonna flip him over on his stomach and look what he does. Flips right back over. <laughs> Boom. He, he, you know, once they get into this mode, they want you to think they're dead so bad that they will do just about anything. I cannot believe. Earlier this year I got a prairie king at this spot. Now a freaking hog nose snake. This one's pretty cut up and banged up. I don't know what... What's wrong with him? I, oh, poor guy. But he's he seems like he's doing okay so far. Holy crap. What happened to you, poor fella? I mean, he's got cuts all over him. Poor thing. Here, I'm gonna finish flipping this stuff and then uh, film this guy. Holy crap. Y'all check this out. Okay, so right now, this snake looks as if he is dead, but... It's all just a trick. He is actually completely fine. Uh, these snakes are kind of like the opossums of the snake world. What they do when you when you catch them is they do a lot of things. So a lot of people refer to these snakes as the drama queens of, you know, the snake world. And that's a perfectly appropriate name for these guys because A, as you saw when I first caught him, what he did was he puffed himself up really, really big and fat. And he also spread a hood like a cobra. Okay, there's uh, not a whole lot of snakes around here that will do that. These are about the only ones that are going to be spreading a hood and rearing up like a freaking cobra. Okay, they are just one of the most fascinating snakes out here. But that's not all. That's not where it ends. So they'll spread their hood out. Sometimes they'll hiss really loudly at you. They'll huff and they'll puff and they'll make a bunch of noise. If that doesn't work, if that doesn't make you leave them alone, the next step is this. They play dead. So they'll flip over on their back, they'll open their mouth up, they'll writhe around and they'll shift and squirm and stuff like that. And while they're doing that, they'll also poop and pee and musk and do all kinds of gross stuff with that. They hang their tongues out, they salivate everywhere. It's extremely, extremely gross and unappealing to anything that might want to eat this snake and that's the whole point behind it. Once they get into this state where they want to convince you that they are dead, it is extremely hard to get them out of it. I have actually been sitting here for like over 10 minutes to try and just see if he'll naturally come out of it. That's about the only way that you can get these snakes to, uh, you know, come out of their, um, <laughs> out of their post-mortem state is to, uh, you know, just kind of leave them alone and just let them sit and then eventually figure out that, oh, okay, well, I'm not getting eaten so I can come back to life, if you will. Now, sometimes it just doesn't work. This snake, I just don't think it's gonna work. I think he is only going to come out of his dead state once I actually leave, and that's unfortunate, but, I mean, that's just how it is sometimes with hognose snakes. Look at that. He's dripping saliva out of his mouth right now. See, that's what I was talking about. See how it's kind of rolling off of his tongue right there? Man, and that is just really gross and unappealing to anything that might, uh, you know, look at this. I'm gonna make it all fall down. Yeah, isn't that gross? <laughs> Ugh. So, this is actually one of, actually, no, this is the biggest hognose snake I've ever found, all right? This is about a, I'd say, three-foot individual. Uh, usually, they're gonna be slightly smaller. They're usually gonna be, oh, you know, two, one and a half foot is about the average size I usually find them at. Not to say that I found a whole lot of these, that's why this is so exciting. Oh my gosh, look at his saliva, it's just blowing in the wind, isn't that yummy? Ugh. 
This is actually a fairly large individual, and this is in the black phase. They also come in a bunch of other phases. They come in like a gray phase. They also come in a much more uh, colorful, like brown phase with a bunch of patterns. I've seen, that was actually the first hog nose I ever saw, was one that was in its uh, brown and colorful kind of phase. But this is the first black phase hog nose snake I've ever seen, so this is really, really cool. And you know, from a distance, a lot of people may uh, look at this and think, oh, well, that must be a racer, but no, it's uh, far, far from it. And uh, you know, the reason they're called hog nose snakes is because up by their nose on their rostral scale, which is the scale that is uh, classified as their nose, that scale they've got is upturned, so it's basically formed into a spade or a shovel, and uh, that's why they're called a hognose snake, because it looks like a pig's nose, right? And the reason they have that is because they can actually burrow into the soil with it, which is really unique. A lot of snakes around here don't actually burrow into the dirt themselves. They'll usually utilize some other animal's hole to go underground with. But these guys, if they want to, they can literally burrow down in the soil with that little shovel they've got on their nose there. That's one of the things that makes these snakes really, really unique. Because of that, you normally find these snakes in places with either sandy or, you know, loose, loamy kind of soil that is easy to burrow in. You're not really going to be finding these snakes as much in places that are more uh, clay-based and, you know, hard to, like, really burrow down into. One other interesting thing about these snakes is that, uh, you know, they're actually a venomous species. You know, you may uh, look at me and think, well, why the heck are you holding them then? Well, the reason is because their venom is not really toxic to people. That's the reason number one. Reason number two is that they practically never bite. I've never heard of somebody getting bitten by a hognose snake. Sometimes they'll do bluff strikes where they kind of punch you with their nose and they don't really open their mouth, but uh, they don't really bite. And uh, you know, the fangs that they have are in the very rear of their mouths and the reason they have them in the rear of their mouths is actually pretty interesting too. One of their main diets is toads. They love eating toads. That's like the main thing that they like to eat. They have a sweet tooth for it. So you gotta think, what's a toad's number one response to when they're getting uh, eaten? Is to bloat themselves up, is to inflate like a balloon, to puff themselves up to make them bigger and harder to swallow. Well, the reason that these snakes have these uh, these sharp fangs in the back of their mouth is not only to deliver a, uh, a mild venom, but also so that they can uh, pop the balloon, as you would say. They actually take those teeth and they uh, they pop the toad with it, and you know that uh, basically makes it to where they're deflated and they can easily eat them at that point. But these snakes are just super duper fascinating. Uh, one of the most interesting snakes that we have around here, and uh, it's it's usually pretty hard to find them. They used to be a lot more common before than they are now, so every single time I see one of these snakes, it's just, just awesome. Good lord, look at that freaking drool. This snake isn't going to come out of his, ugh, he drooled on me. This snake is not going to come out of his dead state, so I'm basically going to get uh, as many pictures and videos of this thing as I can, and I'm just gonna set him back underneath this tin or right next to it and uh, leave him be. But how about that? Eastern freaking hognose snake, a snake that I rarely see and is easily one of the most interesting snakes in, in uh, the United States, so how about that? All right, let's go put him back. Well, it's time to set this hognose snake free. And, you know, usually when I put snakes, you know, back under tin, I kind of let them crawl under it. But this guy, you know, he's not going to come out of his dead state for a very long time. And, you know, he's perfectly fine. This is very normal. Uh, it just takes a long time for them to feel safe and feel like they can come out of their uh, dead state. Uh, so I'm going to basically take him and I'm gonna lift up this tin right here because it is pretty hot out so I'd hate to you know leave him out in the middle of the sun so and this is slightly raised up so I just take that set him underneath it and then let it down like that and uh he'll be just fine under there all right bud wow freaking hog no snake